And hello everybody and welcome to part 4 of the PDC Dart Simulator 2020 World Championship preview video series. That was awesome. And here in part 4 we're going to take on some more second round matchups. And once again we're going to be joined by the absolutely brilliant and wonderful Meryl Van Selm. Hi guys. So... In what shocked everyone on the planet, probably, she actually failed to predict one of the matches correctly last time. I was completely shocked. She only got 7 out of right, 8 right after getting all 16 right in the previous video. Shame on you, Meryl. You're only at, you're only at 96%. Well, to be fair, I got two of them wrong. No, so you only got John one had, of them John, had John Henderson won and a Chris Dobie won. Oh, that's right. You got two wrong. Ha! Yeah. So you're twice as bad <laughs> as I thought. You've only got 92% yep. right in the last two videos. <laughs> I admit, shame on me. I know it. You're just... You're, you're killing us. But, but in, all, in all fairness, uh, it's been pretty remarkable. So uh, we got eight really awesome matches coming up that uh, I would be looking forward to... Really, almost all of them, to be quite fair. So we'll get started right here with uh, Peter Wright and Robbie John Rodriguez. Peter Wright was the unfortunate victim of the PDC Dart Simulator curse last year. For those of you who don't know what it is, whoever the simulator picks to win always loses in the first round. It's happened virtually every tournament I've ever simulated. Uh, poor Ryan Joyce, he learned about it in the Players' Championship final where he was picked to win and promptly went out in round one. In fact, all four of my semi-finalists in uh, that tournament went out in round one. So, uh, yeah, the PDC Dart Simulator curse is definitely a thing. So, sorry, Peter, I killed you last year. But in all seriousness, uh, I don't think this will be too competitive. How about you? Yeah, I think you're right, but I want Robbie John to win. It ain't going to happen, I guess, but <laughs> it would be lovely. Well, you never know. I mean, Peter Wright might change his darts after each set, and then who <laughs> knows what he's going to do. I mean, he maybe he averaged uh, 105 in his warm-ups and said, eh, let's change the darts. I averaged 82 <laughs> with these last week. Let's, get, let's try them again. So, uh, you know, if it was a championship for changing darts, he would have already won, but uh, yeah. All right, so let's uh, see what we got here. That's not the right number. Well, I'm off to a good start. All right, so I'll just zero this out. All right, let's try again. Robert, John, I thought he was... Is he 56? Sorry, apparently I don't know his number. 54. Now, how in the world did you know that? Sorry. Then never mind. Don't don't. I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Just. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Really. Maybe he's even going to win now. <laughs> uh, yeah. So apparently I can't type either. Well, how did Gary Anderson get picked? That's not fifty-four. Now, apparently I did something really bad. So let's just restart the game. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not having a good time so far. All right. There we go. And Peter Wright wins very comfortably. 3 nothing. <clears throat> but we kind of thought that's what was going to happen. Yeah. That's really bad by Robbie John as well. He can do much, much, much better. Well, yes, but he was also playing against a much, much uh, better opponent. What was Wright's number? True. Seven? Seven, yeah. I have to put them in the right slot or the bracket. will not turn out the way it's supposed to. All right, so there we go. Following this, we have uh, Keegan Brown against Mickey Mansell. Uh... This one could be kind of interesting. What do you think? Yeah, I think so as well. Kind of like depends which level of player show up, but I think it should be Keegan Brown. 
It should be. Of course, sometimes he's his own worst enemy. Seems to lose his cool Mm -hmm. a lot. And if he does, he can play really bad. But uh, I think if he gets off to a good start, he should be okay. I think he probably wins 3-1. What do you think? Yeah, 3-1 or 3-2. Could be. We'll see. I'm having a bad time. (laughs) I keep crashing the game. I know why it's doing it, because I'm going too fast. And we're off. <coughs> and King and Brown wins 3-1, so we, yep. we predicted this one correct. Though I don't think he'd be too satisfied with his performance. Only an 88 average. So he'll go on to play Snakebite. Alright, match number three of the day. We've got Jeffrey Deswan against Raymond Van Barneveld. Uh, They're kind of from uh, an interesting country, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. My country. (laughs) Yeah, your country. Very nice country, in fact. So, uh, which Dutchman do you like in this one? Jeffrey. Jeffrey Deswan. You like Jeffrey yeah. Deswan. So, uh, he had a really crappy draw last year, having to play cross right away. Obviously, he's got a better draw this year. So, is this the last match of RVB's career? I hope so. You hope so? Oh, my goodness. That's awful. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, it's it's what I told you before, you know, of course, it's hard to see course. him struggling. It is, but uh, you'd like to see him play well and maybe have one more last big run the way Phil Taylor did, making a final. It'd be it'd no. be really cool to watch. That's probably if he, unrealistic. If he, ma- if he makes the final, then Sego Asada is out somewhere in the process, so that shouldn't happen. <laughs> No, I think we can both agree Van Barneveld make, winning more than a couple of matches is probably unrealistic, but uh, anything is possible. Let's yeah, should be Deswan. Deswan, I'm going for Deswan. Ah, uh, you're going for Deswan. Yeah. And the winner is... Jeffrey Deswan in a landslide. Look at that average. That's the biggest one we've had of the tournament, I'm pretty sure. 104.66. He was pretty much flawless. And uh, Van Barneveld... uh, Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Didn't get anything Mm. done at all. Yeah, he was just... That was uh, clearly two guys not on a level playing field. Where's 23? I don't see it. There it is. Alright, so who will play Mr. Deswan? Will it be Dave Chisnell or will it be Vincent van der Voort? We just had uh, one Dutch on Dutch matchup. Are we going to have a second one? I hope so. You hope Could so. Could be a close one, Vincent and, uh, and Dave. Could be, but you know, a lot of that depends on which Dave shows up. If the good one shows up, I think he should easily win. (laughs) I recall it was uh, the Grand Slam, of course, where Chisnell was playing so great, and people were even saying, oh, it's his tournament to lose, and then he just uh, didn't get the job done. Just kind of bottled it there at the end, but that's Chizzy for you. Yeah, Vandervoort, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get a consistently good game, but will it be enough? I hope see. so. Let's see. So many Dutch people in this session. <laughs> mm-hmm. We have two more coming up. And Chizzy wins three to two. It was going to be close. It was very close. Yes. 
Yeah, I, I kind of thought Chisnall would win. He's been playing some really good darts this year. He's looking more and more like his form of two years ago when he was in the Premier League, so mm -hmm. he should be back in the Premier League, I would yeah, think. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I mean, if he's not, that's Definitely. just really strange. It's not strange, it's stupid. Yeah, well, yeah. well stupid is contenders, but they decided to do that again, but that's a, <laughs> that's a different conversation. All right, so no upsets yet, but will we have one here? We have uh, Joe Cullen against Nico Kurz. Cullen, of course, uh, won his first stage event this year, a Euro Tour title. I was actually uh, in Pittsburgh when he won that. I was... It was quite funny. I didn't get to play on Sunday, and the person said, "Oh, that's so. That's, I'm so sorry that you're here in Pittsburgh with nothing to do, and you don't even get to play." And I say, "Are you kidding me? I'm doing exactly what I want to do. I'm watching the Ravens kick some ass, and I'm watching darts, and Joe Cullen is winning. This is like the perfect Sunday." <laughs> <laughs> so, in all seriousness, uh, Joe Cullen had a pretty good year, at least the second half of the year. He uh, yeah. Nico Kurz, well, you know more about him than I do, so what do you think of his chances? Well, the last round I predicted him to win, kinda, so, well, why not again? You think he can pull a second upset? Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> wow, I would be impressed if he can do that. So, uh, I'm picking Joe, but uh, I've been wrong on nearly every one, so... Uh, <laughs> Probably will be again, so uh, let's take a look. Joe Cullen Ooh. with the win, and a very good good show. Look at that, he even had a big fish. Yeah. I think that's the big fi first big fish we've seen. Yes, yep. Ed Kurtz wasn't as good as he was last Time. He most certainly was not, but uh, if to be honest, if Joe Cullen plays like that, 97 average, 10 out of 17 on doubles, and getting big checkouts, you're going to see a lot of people that uh, won't be able to compete with that. Yep. Let's see, where's my 15? Where, where session, session 13. You're so awesome. All right. <clears throat> Up next, we have Jermaine Watamina, yet another Dutchman against Luke Humphreys, a not Dutchman. Yes. This should be an interesting match. You've got uh, Watamina was on the World Cup team. So, uh, what did you think of that? Did you think he should have been there? Uh, yes. I, yeah. Definitely. Really. Because you know there was this discussion of Raymond being there, or Jermaine, or even Jeffrey de Zwaan. But I was like, you know, they should just pick the one who's second, the second Dutchman, and he, wa Jermaine was. And they shouldn't pick Raymond because of sympathy, or you know. And they actually picked Jermaine, and that was, that was the right choice. Yeah, I would definitely not have picked Raymond. I would have either, personally, I would have picked either, uh, Deswan or maybe even Danny Knoppert. I think they're both very strong players. Yeah. Not that not that Jermaine Watamina is not a good player. He's a very good player. I just think yeah. uh, maybe he's not the second best Dutch player right now, but he's certainly in the conversation. Is he better than Luke Humphreys, though, is the question that presents us now. I hope he is, yeah. Just because he's Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Luke, of course, I'll be hopelessly biased towards him because he actually helped me make this game. He provided uh, some of the darts analysis I needed to make this possible, so big thanks to him. Uh, and, you know, you got to root for a guy who's trying to overcome the struggles he is, so I yeah. would like to see Luke win. I think what me is probably the favorite, but I think it'll be pretty close. I think it's going to be 3-2 yeah. either way. I think this one goes the distance. Ready to see it? Ready. Well, you're going to have to wait a little more because I crashed the game again, being stupid. Ah. I'm not having a good night. Have I mentioned that a few times? <laughs> yeah, you have. Yeah, 2 40 2 
one seventy four two one five three one one it's not that hard let's go or maybe it is that hard to memorize all those numbers in that order I don't know should be close I think Wow Wow look at that game by Luke Humphreys Wow he brought his a game <clears throat> yeah he played really well that's uh, pretty impressive. Then again, last year he had a really good run at yep. Alley Pal. He made the made the quarterfinals. So, uh, guess there's no reason to think he can't do it again. He'll take on uh, Joe Cullen. All right. So we got two more. We got Danny Noppert, who we were just talking about, against Steve Lennon. Two guys who definitely performed well this year. Which one you like? Danny Nuppert. Danny Nuppert. Yeah. Another... It was great talking, uh, great talking to him during the World Series Finals. Oh, really? Yeah, I did an interview with him and I completely messed up. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Was it in never... Dutch or in English? Yeah, in Dutch. Yeah, in ah, Dutch. well, there you go. Yeah. No one knew that. And I didn't, I never uh, uploaded it because I com completely messed up. Aww. But it was funny. Um, and, well, it was fun to talk to him and. He made the final, of course, which, which was great. Yeah. yeah, that was definitely really cool in front of the home crowd. It was in Amsterdam, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, that's yeah. I remember it was in the Netherlands. It was uh, really an exciting tournament. So uh, yeah, next year it will be in Austria, I believe. It won't be in uh, in Amsterdam anymore, which is kind of a shame. Right, they'll get they'll, they'll get a Euro Tour event back, won't they? Uh, Amsterdam? No, uh, Leeuwarden will get a Euro Tour event. No, no, I mean, they had a one fewer Euro Tour because they had the World Series Finals, I thought. Or maybe I'm completely wrong. Well, anyway, <laughs> back on topic. Uh, you think Noppert will win, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have yeah. to agree with that. I think Lennon's had a nice year. I just don't think he's quite uh, up to the task here. But I think he wins a set. I think he loses 3-1. to one. I think Noppert's moving on. And we're off. Who's it going to be? Noppert in a smashing. He played really well, as we can both see. Great one. Do what? Great one. Hope he does that in uh, real life as well. Well, he very well might. He's a very good player. Mm -hmm. You know, He is a lakeside finalist. They don't just hand out those opportunities. <laughs> All right, and now for the feature match of this of this session, uh, former world champion Rob Cross against former Premier League member Kim Hybrix. Uh As a Cross fan myself, I obviously would love Cross to win, but I don't think it's necessarily a done deal. Do you? Well, if the great Kim shows up, it could be Kim. But yeah, it should be cross, right? Yeah, I think it should be cross. I don't think Hybrix is quite up to the task just yet. Yeah. I, I think he might keep it close, but if the bad Hybrix shows up, then there's just no telling what could happen. So we'll take a look and we'll see what happens. Of course, if Cross loses, that would be great news because that means he'll probably win the world championship. <laughs> Whereas if he wins, then of course we all know what will happen. But he won, so not a particularly great game by him, though. Only a 96 average, so pretty mediocre. But uh, his opponent was not good, so not so hard. So we will slide him right there. All right, and there we have uh, some of the next round of some of the next rounds are starting to fill out. You can see it right in here. There's some of our third round matches we have. We'll get to those in future videos. Uh, so here is the rest of round two, which we will have coming up, and you can see our eight uh, matches for this last video. The only upset was Luke Humphreys being Jermaine Watanina. The other seven went to the seeds. 
So we have sessions 9 and 10 coming up in the next video. Uh, which match do you think you're looking most forward to? Of course, uh, Lawrence Ilagan and Paul Lim. Yeah, those should be good. Yep. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Ratajski and Jamie Hughes. I think that's going to be a really yeah. good match. Yep. I'm also liking uh, Vandenberg and Josh Payne. you got two very talented uh, younger players who could be really good one day. So I think those will be a lot of fun to see as well. So we'll catch those and more in the next video. And uh, again, thanks very much to everyone who uh, tuned in to watch these. I really do appreciate it. It's awesome to have support. Also, a very special thanks to our amazing co-host, Meryl. Be sure to uh, follow her on Twitter at Meryl180 for lots of awesome content, commentary, and other cool stuff. Anything else you'd like to say before we sign off for this one? Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Sounds great. So we'll see you in the next one.